top of the day, beautiful people, top of the day. in here guys we're getting ready for the fall feast let me tell you about something that really blew my mind yesterday as i began to write it down i think i i casually mentioned it before um let's see joe 10 let me put joe 10 here okay so you know how um we've been studying well, i've been studying and sharing with you some of you i know watching have been studying a little bit too about the the new moons and how it lines up and then um, <clears throat> I realized, like, last year, um, I was like, man, I think the Sabbaths rotate. Not so much, like, rotate, but as it agrees with the current calendar that we're on, like the American, the Gregorian calendar that everybody follows, like, today is September the what? The 8th. Because they've messed with time and the calendar and switching from... Um, different calendar days and stuff and the year is longer than what Yahuwah said the year would be Yahuwah say every year in the book of Enoch Yahuwah says that every year without fail it will be 364 days but currently here in the land we live and everywhere around the world today every year is 360 five days so they added a day to the year not only that but they added leap years every four years and during the time where they were transitioning from the i think it was the julian calendar calendar to the gregorian calendar i think about 14 days went missing probably i think it was 10 to 14 days that went missing i'd like how do you just like remove those like today is like the second and like tomorrow is like the 12th you know so it, all of those shenanigans and stuff happened. So as I began to realize that, I'm like, hmm, at first it was just a thought that came to me. But the more I read, the more I was researching, I was like, I'm thinking that the Sabbaths may be rotating if we're looking at the dates. Now, I know that currently most of the world, I'm going to say most of the world because everybody's not following the Sabbath every Friday sundown or Saturday sundown as I, you know. But that's what's being pushed, you know, and then they're celebrated just you know celebrating but i'm like father i want to get as close as to the truth as possible of what we're supposed to be doing everybody may not agree but everybody ain't done a study either they just want to they just want to disagree with something without actually going to do the research you know but not only that there was a friend of my uncle who had mentioned it to him like a couple years ago and i, I didn't know that but i actually mentioned it to my uncle who also does a lot of research but twabu but twabu train of tiffany hey girl hey um and he said to me, he said, that's interesting because Chuck mentioned that before, too. And he said, and I was, I was looking to it. He said, I, I, I think that actually is right. I think it moves. I said, yeah, I'm almost positive it moves. Not that it moves, so to speak. But if we look at it on, like I said, the current calendar on our calendar, it would seem to move. But from the beginning of time, it's still in the same place. But because we have screwed with time, it would seem to change, you know every week so i said that to say now if you actually make a habit of practicing the feast days like yahuwah told us to do because at a certain point he said from this point these feasts will be memorials you know so just like you know it's just like a celebration every year just to remember you know so we're not slaughtering animals for real or whatever um but he said these are going to be memorial feasts for us to remember constantly remember what yah has done and the promises that he's given to us right so if you practice the feast what you will notice now i didn't notice it until i actually like i was saving in my electronic calendar boom okay so i do the count okay from here is 50 days boom on here and i i put in my electronic calendar to give myself reminders for when the feast days are coming up so what i noticed this year right and okay so tomorrow from the count because we know um every time there's a new moon we, we talk i try to reiterate it um because a lot of people oh well, do we keep count from the beginning of time and because we don't we don't know you know especially if we don't know how time has changed and how they screwed with time there should be a way where we can course correct ourselves at any given time right in any given generation to get back on track with y'all right there is a way to do that 
the sun, the moon, and the stars. You can tell time is really, really easy. At least you can count the days, right? So each month or each, the word month comes from moon, right? So every new moon or every new, they used to say month, but now it's every new moon, you know, or every new month. Um, the count for the Sabbath starts over. So you have, boom, the Sabbath day, and they will throw a feast on, I mean, I'm sorry, you have the new moon day, and they would, um, although it wasn't a Sabbath, they celebrated, they announced it, new moon day, new moon day, you know, it meaning it's the beginning of a new month. Remember, when you when the moon is completely black, and the day when you can see the first sliver begins the first day, the count. So you have new moon day, and the next day begins the seven-day count. So you got, you got new moon, and even if you don't know, Every time we get to a new moon or shucks, even when you get to, um, if you can keep the count from the full moon, which is the 15th day of the month, you should be able to get back on track with the Sabbaths. Like, it is so easy, right? So, every new moon, you have the new moon, then begins a seven-day count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we know the seventh day will always line up on the day that the new moon came. So... Our last new moon was on a Wednesday, which was Did I write it in here? Because we're about to come up on another one. I didn't write it in here. But anyway, it was on a Wednesday. I'm sorry. Wait. No. Yeah, it was on a Wednesday. So anyway, the Sabbath, um, this new moon cycle, this month fall on a Wednesday but I said all that to say the next new moon right and you'll notice if you practice the feast days um different feast days well we know every seventh day is a Sabbath is a rest day but like um Passover is a um um is a feast day the next day is the feast of unleavened bread feast of, feast of unleavened bread is seven days the first and the last day is a Sabbath. But if you've been paying attention, you would notice um, that when we calculate it according to like the new moon and the Sabbath, that first day and that last day, oh, it was blown. I was like, wait a minute, this is this is just coincidence that this has happened this way. You know, so as I go back and count and I'm looking at my other counts, I was like, oh snap, when you follow it that way, the fees that are long, um, they end up, I mean, with the exception of Passover and um, I want to say atonement, they all, because they're all no work days, they are no work days because they also fall on Sabbath days. Who could line that up like that? Like it's blowing them out. Okay, so and here's the beauty about this next um, new moon cycle. All of the fall feasts fall within this next new moon cycle and the next new moon will be on a uh, Friday. So everybody that's currently practicing uh, Sabbath using Friday sundown to uh, uh, Saturday sundown will actually be in alignment with those who are counting it the way we're currently counting it. So all of us will be observing 2020's fall feast at the same exact time, all of us. So I was like, let me see what when they celebrate. And I was like, oh, snap, I looked at their feast days. Yeah, Lisa, I don't believe in coincidences either. So I'm like, yo, I'm like, who could line this up like this? You know, so I don't know. I ain't saying that going to happen, but I, I think there's going to be an extra special blessing, you know, because everybody not perfect. Everybody's in different levels and areas what they learning as they return to Yah and, you know, their theology is slowly changing as they begin to read the truth and realize some things don't apply and some things should apply and I need to adjust my life. I don't know, but I think it's going to be an extra special blessing of peace for you who is people this particular fall feast days in 2020 um, because trumpets fall on the new moon, like the Feast of Trumpets, um, it begins September the 18th, right? And it's a new moon. And then the next, which is a Day of Atonement, is 10 days later, is the 27th, right? So now in this um, new moon, the Sabbaths are on Fridays, right? So Feast of Tabernacles starts October the 7th which is the, you know, the first day of Feast of, Tabern Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot or Tents, when we dwell in tents for eight days. The first day 
is a Friday, October the 2nd, which is a no work day, but it is also a Sabbath, a true Sabbath in this new moon cycle. And the last day of tents, which is eight days later, also falls on Friday. Remember the first and the last day of tents is a no work day, but it is a true no work day because it falls on the Sabbath because the ninth, the last day, the 9th of October, the last day of Feast of Tabernacles falls on a Friday, which is in the cycle of the new moon, which is Fridays, and it's a Sabbath, but it, it lines up. So I'm like, oh, snap. So, you know, I want to share it with y'all. Y'all may not be tracking it like I am, but I figure I'd, I'd bring it up, you know, just in case, you know, but I didn't start realizing it until I actually, like, yesterday, I was like, let me write this down. Like, after we did the video yesterday, I was thinking, I was, let me go ahead and write it in here so I can remember to remind the people when I'm doing the video, okay, this is coming up, boom, boom, boom. But as I did, I was like, oh, wait, hold up. Oh, snap. And that's when I got to looking up everybody else's days and stuff. I'm like, hmm, this is going to be really interesting. So, I know that was a long intro today, y'all, but... I just have to let y'all know that just in case you weren't tracking like I'm tracking or like some other people are tracking. So, but into who? Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is September the 8th, <laughs> 2020. Uh, we're on day 247 and we're reading Job 10, 11, and 12. So, this is year two of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, also known as the Old Testament. And in the two year, two year consecutive count, it is day two. I'm sorry. In the two year consecutive count, it is day 610 of reading, right? Okay, remember, we took out the Sabbath day, so it would really be more than that, but we don't read on the Sabbaths. We just chill. Well, we don't do the live reading. I hope y'all would, you know, read. Or you may just rest all together. I don't know. Listen to it. I don't know. But anyway, we don't do the live on Sabbaths. Okay, Job chapter 10. Job frames his plea to y'all. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to Yah, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me, the work of your own hands, while smiling on the schemes of the wicked? Are your eyes like those of a human? Do you see things only as people see them? Is your lifetime only as long as ours? Is your life so short that you must quickly probe for my guilt and search for my sin? Although you know I am not, not guilty, no one can rescue me from your hands. You formed me with your hands. You made me, yet now you completely destroy me. Remember that you made me from dust. Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh, and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, your true intent was to watch me, and if I sinned, you would not forgive my guilt. If I am guilty, too bad for me. Even if I am innocent, I can't hold my head high because I am filled with shame and misery. And if I hold my head high, you hunt me like a lion and display your awesome power against me. Again and again, you witness against me. You pour out your growing anger on me and bring fresh armies against me. Why then did you deliver me from my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? It would be as though I had never existed, going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone, that I may have a moment of comfort before I leave, never to return for the land of darkness and utter gloom. It is a land as dark as midnight, <clears throat> a land of gloom and confusion, where even the light is dark as midnight. Job chapter 11. Zophar's first response to Job. Then Zophar the Namathite replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent by just a lot of talking? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock Yah, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim my beliefs are pure and I am clean in the sight of Yah. If only Yah would speak, if only he would tell you what he thinks, if only he would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, Yah is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. I, I would have punched him right in his mouth. Like, shut up, bro. You don't know me. <laughs> Can you solve the mysteries of Yah? 
Can you discover everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens. And who are you? I mean, like he talking to Job like this, like Job was a filthy sinner, right? <laughs> Such knowledge is higher than the heavens. And who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If Yah comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false and he takes note of all their sins. And if empty-headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child if only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you then your face will brighten with innocence you will be strong and free of fear you will forget your misery it will be like water flowing away your life will be brighter at the noonday even darkness will be as bright as morning Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help. But the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope is death. Last chapter for the day, y'all. Job chapter 12. Job's fourth speech. A response to Zophar. Then Job spoke again. You people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you're no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me, for I call on Yah and expect an answer. I am a just and blameless man, yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling, but robbers are left in peace, and those who provoke Yah live in safety, though Yah keeps them in his power. Mom. Yes, baby. Okay, give me a second. I'll take it off in a minute. Just ask the animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you. For they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of Yah. For the life of every living thing is in his hand, and the breath of every human being. The ear tests the words it hears, just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. But true wisdom and power are found in Yah. Counsel and understanding are his. What he destroys cannot be rebuilt. When he puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If he holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. If he releases the waters, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, stripped of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robes of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waist. His priest, he leads priests away, stripped of status. He overthrows those with long years and power. He silences the trusted advisor and removes the insight of elders. He pours disgrace upon princes and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in darkness. He brings light to the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and he destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. They grope in darkness without a light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. And that is the end of our reading for today, beautiful people. Oh, I was reading Lisa's comment. Okay, so I was trying to be, I got lost. She just put me back on track. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, y'all. So that was Job 10, 11, and 12. And I'm not going to go on because I did ah! such a long uh, intro. So let's go ahead right to the blessing, which is found in Numbers chapter 6. Mom! Yes, baby girl. Zay on your, on your back. Yeah, I see Zay behind me, okay? Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right, y'all. So, quick recap. Job 10, 11, and 12 is day 247. It is September the 8th, Tuesday, 2020. And the blessing we're reading is in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons. Remember, Aaron and his sons 
are uh, the priests and the Levites. Aaron was the high priest. His sons were priests. And then you have the Levitical bloodline. This, this is all the same. The priests and the Levites, right? You just, you have um, some Levites actually were promoted to priests like the higher, like higher management overseeing, you know. Okay. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May you who will bless us and keep us, may you who will make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us, may you who will lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Whose name do we put on people? And in whose whose name? Yah's name. Yah's name only. Yah's name only. And let me just reiterate this. Somebody was doing a question and answer section uh session day before yesterday i shared it with a few people but i didn't share it um which i think i would share it today she said she was going to take it down i think it might still be up but it's almost about two hours long but the whole video is questions and answers right people were asking a bunch of questions and she was answering them and it was it was really really good to keep your attention the whole time but a couple of questions i'm glad people ask because as people are waking up you know they're asking some of these same questions like i get a lot of inbox boxes about some of these questions okay who do you worship you know like like we really have to like reteach it although it's in plain sight people don't realize it because they're so used to so used to praising the name of jesus right but we're told not to pray even in the new testament he says praise the father worship the father right but somehow well, people don't read, so they just kind of do what they see other people do. But people were asking some of those same questions. But here's the thing, the question, it was towards the end. Somebody asked the question. They said, who are we supposed to worship? Do we worship Jesus or the Holy Spirit? And she immediately, she said, we're to worship Yah. And she went to the next question. I was like, see, you know, but when you read, you realize and it becomes obvious. Like, wait a minute. And you kind of, all those gray areas kind of become ungray for you. And now they're either black and white. So, like, the gray area is like confusion, you know. So, but we simply, if you would simply read, it tells you in plain English, really. Like, we are to worship Yah. Even, you know, even if you read, if you're a big reader of the New Testament, I would recommend that you read the Old Testament to balance it out so you can see where things have been added and things have been taken away because when something doesn't seem right, either something has been added or something has been taken away. But you won't really pick up on that unless you're really, really familiar. Yes, baby. I see that very pretty. Unless you're familiar with the words of Yah from the Old Testament. So we are to balance everything against Yah's words. Girl, you watch, you watch the Tiffany. Hold it, don't play. Girl, I'm telling you. You know, so, but, um... She, the, I, I like listening to Holder because you know how when you learn something, I know I have the tendency to get super excited about stuff. And my uncle always said, me, he said, slow down, slow down, Pam. You're starting to speed up because when I get excited about something, you know, I tend to talk fast and I want to share everything with everybody like right then. But I realized, okay, I need to finish studying this out just in case I don't have something quite in place. I don't want to tell somebody something wrong, right? You know, so I learned to, I'm practicing learning learning to talk slow not talk slow but when I slow myself down I realize that I can calm the speed of my mind because my mind is like like this and sometimes I stumble over my words and I stutter because like my mind is going like this and I'm trying to get it out of my mouth so that's why my mouth be speeding up and I'm like okay so I gotta just take a breath and just because the information is not going anywhere and that's why i have to type out a lot of things and i have to write out a lot of things because if i don't if i'm taking it a lot of times from here to here without fully processing it and going through it and making sure i'm taking out unnecessary stuff or added things or whatever that it, it you know that you really don't need i want to give you straight facts and where you can go Sometimes I give people an overabundance of information and they may have information overload and it's like, huh, and I don't want to frustrate people, you know, so, okay, let me breathe, take my time, okay, what do I really need to share? What do I think my audience can handle at this moment? I don't share everything, so some things that I learn, I don't share it like up here because some people can't handle some of the stuff yet simply because of where they're at in their 
understanding things. It's just like watching the growth of children. Like, my ch I have children, like, all the different age ranges, from toddler all the way to married adult living their own life outside of my house, building their own family, right? You know, so when I teach my children, like with Bella, she's three, about to be four, I have to teach her in a little different way than I can teach my other sons who are older, like nine and ten. They can take in a lot more. They can process it a lot faster because they've learned some skills. They learn how to decipher truth from error, you know. But Bella, not so much advanced as they are yet. So I have to move a little bit slower to make sure she's getting it and I'm not confusing her. Although she can take in a lot, it's the same thing with adults who are who have to be retaught who have been indoctrinated all their lives you know because they get confused and it gets overwhelming and then you go through this period of anger and like oh this is too much and you want to just close it all and put it away you know um so i'm trying to be mindful of that in the different